and your keys to success. Uh, you can use bullet points here. It doesn't have to be very formal. Um, so I'm using here are my note. I made notes on this uh, business plan. So you can use bullet points. Uh, use any metrics you have that will be different for each core. Um, how will providing a service make it successful? So uh, if you're choosing to do one service over another, why is that going to make your core great? Um, and you'll go into a SWOT analysis. Dave talked about last time that having a SWOT analysis is a really good indicator for other stakeholders to know the ins and outs of where you're coming from. So your strengths, are you the cheapest? Are you the best? Do you have the best location on campus for this to happen? Do you have the newest technology? Uh, your weaknesses, they're gonna typically be your opposites of your strength. We're not the best, but we're really good at this. Uh, we are kind of far away from campus. Unfortunately, Krista works, uh, she's with the vet school, so her lab is at the vet school and a lot of some of our research are here. So that might be a weakness for her. Um, I don't think that it technically, it is for her, but in another situations, in other course case, it might be. Um, opportunities, uh, are other people offering this nearby in the US or in Ohio? Um, or is this an opportunity because you're actually on campus and you can help um, people on campus? And then what are your threats? Um, is there too much competition in the third party marketplace? Um, are you, there's lots of people like for genomics, there are people setting up drop boxes from third party vendors and you just drop your samples in, they come, they have a representative, come pick them up. That's a threat to our, our core business. Um, is, cha is technology changing too fast and we don't have the funds to keep up with it? What are, so what are your threats? Um, again, SWOT analysis is gonna be important for um, people who are gonna, might invest in your core to know what, what is happening. If you just tell them, oh, we all need this service, they're not really then getting a good picture of why we need the service and what obstacles are we going to come across. So then the next section is, um, what are the other involved units or stakeholders? Uh, the CCTS, that's a stakeholder for a couple of our course. Chris is one of them. Um, they give vouchers to PIs that use our services and if we're not on that uh, list of people who can use those, then we don't, that's not a state, that's, then we're not cooperate, or we're not in business with the CCTS and we really want to be there. So um, the CCC has shared oversight with other departments um, for startup packages and equipment and cores. Our proteomics core is actually housed in the Office of Research, but we have joint oversight. So when we're talking about a business plan for proteomics, we need to talk about our relationship with the Office of Research um, or the College of Medicine. And so who is also involved in supporting your core? There's only a Department of Pathology core. You'll wanna list that here, but the Department of Pathology excuse me, falls under the College of Medicine. So how do they fit in to your operations? Are there any uh, MOUs or letters of authors or startup agreements, uh, retention agreements that play a role in your core facility? So did the core director get money to start the core? Um, did did uh, the core facility get money not only from your department, but from other departments, the College of Medicine, um, the Office of Research to start up your core. Uh, be very specific if there are requirements that you have to meet to get that money. So those are very important to have listed. Um, are there any other types of agreements between other departments that might play a role in how the core is operated? Any questions on those? or? And here you just, and then org structure of the shared resource. Here you just wanna list, you can actually do a, if you wanted to do just the org chart of um, who's in the core, who's working in the core, how do they report to one another. Um, if you want to, and if some of our course do this, provide a short synopsis of the person, or if, they, if they're going into detail and actually providing people about why that person does that part of the job. Um, you can do that, you can be as detailed as you want, or at least at minimum, you need to have an org flow of here's the director, here's the lab manager, 
and then who reports to who. So that's clear into anybody writing this or reading this. They know who reports to who. Um, performance management. Uh, lists, so for CCC cores, they have a specific set of requirements that they need to meet for being a core. They'll want to list all of those here. But if you have requirements for um, other ways that you're measured based on performance by any of those other stakeholders, so some of our CCTS supported cores, they need different information than the CCC requires them to collect. So that's what they'll want to have that in their business plan is what, me what um, measurements do they, do they need to fulfill for other stakeholders other than um, what we have listed here is what the CCC requires. And that's, it's, this was um, built by Veronica and the CCC. So that's why that's standard. But if you ha don't use any of those or don't have any of these, you just want to write how is your core looked at and measured for performance. Um, and then everything, the couple sub subsections under this, do you have a user committee? You'll want to list um, who's a part of the user committee. Did they make recommendations in the past? Um, what does the user committee actually do? Uh, how involved are they? Um, if you have uh, the last meeting minutes, you can definitely add those to the, um, to the business plan in an appendix. Uh, you want to say how often they meet. Uh, we have a scorecard for our cores. Um, so when we, we attach a copy of the blank scorecard to the business plans, um, and how often is this done? It's done yearly for our cores. We have a self-assessment for our cores. That's done beforehand. Um, and then in, based on the scorecard, you can see what's assessed. Uh, what are other pertinent metrics for the shared resource of the core? Uh, for the CCC course, it's the it's the CCSG, and we get we actually have there are metrics from NCI that we have to meet and that that are talked about in the in the what they call the pink sheets. Um, so you want to include that information if you're subsidized by another grant. Definitely stop me if you have questions. I know I'm running through this. I just don't want to cut Krista too short, and you'll have copies of this. And if you've noticed. The copy that's up here is my copy with my notes. Would it be helpful if you guys got those as well? As, so you have a blank template here, but I have kind of notes. I mean, obviously, they're short fragment sentences of notes, but if, you, if that'll be helpful, I'm more than happy to share that with you. Um, staff development plan. What do you do to develop your staff? Do you build in a travel budget to send one to, for them to go to a training? Um, do you put on seminars? Do you send them to conferences here? Are there uh, continuing education classes that they have to take and that you support and, and fund for them to go to? You'll just want to list that here if you do anything specific for your staff development. Um, so your program, location, and facilities. This should be a pretty simple part of it. If you, you just put your address of where you're located, and any equipment, list all the equipment that you have in your, in your core. It can be a bullet pointed list. Um, if it's owned by other departments, you'll want to make sure that that's called out. If it was purchased by a federal funding source, you'll want to make sure that's called out. Um, it can be as detailed as you want or just be a list or an Excel grid you can pop in here uh, with all of those information. Uh, you're not required to have the PO or the purchase date but those could be beneficial and helpful for if you're writing a business plan and someone in a couple in a year or two needs to revisit that and they don't have to go looking for that information again. Um, you want, you'll want to list anything, any piece of equipment that you use to provide your service. You don't have to put the dollar amount. That's not really necessary because we should be able to find that out. So for cost effectiveness, if you are you, how are you cost effective? Are you lower than market? Are you about market? Um, you'll want to address that here. Uh, if you are more than, if you're more than market, you'll need to explain why you are valuable and uh, why your specialized services. Do you hold the customer's hand? Are you most experienced? Do you do something that's uh, such a niche area that nobody else really does, and that's why 
you, your prices tend to be outside the market. Um, what value do you add to the university and to the service? Um, you'll want to use real life examples here. And you'll want to, um, it says compare by average, where would the typical PI go if they weren't using OSU? So put in how, how you compare cost-wise to other places. You'll want to list uh, your list of services. Um, this, uh, again, can just be a, 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 you can either call it out in an appendix or you can do a Excel print, uh, just copy and paste from Excel. Um, it says, no, you cannot use user fees for developing new services, development type of operations. These must have funding from other sources. So that's just a call out for when you're talking about, um, so you want to list all of your services here. But you don't want to talk about, when you're listing your services, any potential services or future services. That you'll talk about later in like maybe future plans. But that it, it's called out here specifically because um, we shouldn't be developing new services using the money that's been brought in for current services. Does that make sense? It's kind of like, um, because usually when you're developing a new service, you're developing for a specific PI. And then you don't really know what to charge that PI, so you don't really charge that PI. So then everyone else ends up eating the cost of developing that service. And you don't want to, you don't want to put that burden on your current customers. So if you want to develop, develop a new test, a new assay, something like that, you want to ask for funding support to help do that to, so that you can pay a little bit of uh, text time to develop that new stuff because you don't know what the actual cost is going to be. Uh, next, you'll talk about your capacity. Um, talk about what is your capacity, where are you in relation, if are you over capacity, if you're close to full, what do you plan to do to fix that? Um, if you're nowhere near, how do you plan on increasing your usage? Um, you want to look at staff and machine time. So maybe your staff isn't at full capacity, but your machines are at full capacity. So how are you going to do, what are you going to do to adjust that? Um, and then service level agreements. If you have them, you'll put them in your business plan. We're just going to skip over that because Chris is going to go over that here in just a couple minutes. And then you'll do your fee cost calculation. And this will be done, and you'll put this in the appendix, so it'll be done outside the business plan, but you'll reference it here in the business plan. And then billing and collection plan. Who does your billing? What process is that followed? Do you invoice on a monthly basis, or do you invoice weekly? How do you do, how do, you do your billing, and how do you do your collections? How long does it take before you submit undo, un pass due invoices to the university for collections, those types of things. If you were a CCC core, just put, see Heather does our billing and she does it monthly. Um, but <clears throat> you'll just want to talk about how do you do it? What is your process for that? So then financial considerations and upcoming funding requests. Uh, if you have any information about pieces of equipment, new technology that's coming, like Krista mentioned, if in year four of your upcoming budget, because the next section is your budget, your five-year budget, you'll want to talk about any future thing so that then when people see, they look at the next thing, which is the budget, they'll see, okay, she said in year four or in two or three years, we were going to need a new piece of equipment. And you listed out what the piece of equipment was and what the potential costs are. They'll see that reflected in the budget down below. Um, Let's see. If you have any, if there's going to be any new recruits, any new hires, you'll want to talk about this here. Anything that will have an impact on the core um, that's not talked about in any of the previous sections. Um, if the service contract is going to increase, or say we paid for a five-year service contract and we bought the equipment, and now in year three we're going to have to start paying for a service contract again. Those types of things that you want to think about um, in future years. So then we have, and then you'll copy and paste from that Excel template in the budget. You'll just put that right in here. Um, <clears throat> and you'll, talk, you'll want to talk about the last line of the budget is your surplus or deficit projected. So you'll need to talk about it. 
why are you ending in a surplus or deficit? What are you going to do to fix it? Um, then you'll talk about your usage. Um, who's using your core? We break things out by percent of cancer center member usage, college of medicine usage, those types of things. Because if I'm looking at the college of medicine and to ask them for money for the core, they'll want to see, well, how many of our PIs use the core? We don't want to, if only one of our PIs use a core and you're asking me for $100,000, it doesn't make any sense. So you'll want to talk about this here. Not specifically the asking of money, but who are your users? Um, if you're not providing services, just say that you provide your plan on providing services. So if this is the budget or the, in the business plan that you're coming up with to start a core, just say we haven't provided any services yet, but we anticipate providing services for these PIs in these colleges so that you know where you're going with your business. Um, that then rolls into usage forecast and future users. If you know of new users coming on, we have so there's some new genomics PIs that are starting at Nationwide Children's. That's something we would want to put in a business plan for any of our, our, our cores that utilize either they're on the front end of genomics or are they on the tail end, our bioinformaticians. They'll want to talk about all the possible potential bioinformatics work that might come from those two new recruits. Uh, and come up with a marketing plan. Uh, where are you going to go? Are you going to go to the research expo? Are you going to go to the annual scientific meeting? Are you going to put it, uh, put your services out on Science Exchange, which is a website to um, advertise core facilities? You're going to be on the ABRF website. Where are you going to go for marketing? How are you going to get your name out there? And then what are your five-year goals in conclusion and summary? They kind of go roll hand in hand with one another. Um, so talk about and it should have been reflected in your five-year budget. You'll talk about what is going to happen and where do you anticipate to be at the end of five years. Um, and then start into your conclusion. Just a brief summary of everything that you have just talked about. Um, then you can list all of your appendices. So we went through that really fast because I don't want to cut Krista off because she has really good information about SLAs and SOPs. So what can I answer? questions about the business plan. I will send these notes to you. It is really good. So soon or, or sooner or later, the university to even start up an earnings operation is going to require a business plan. So um, you might be able to start one without one right now, but sooner or later they will require this. So it's good to have. Mm -hmm. Yeah, sure. So the annual thing, no, you'll want to revisit. It's about um, every four to five years you'll start writing your new business plan, which we'll probably start them ne again next year. The only good thing is, is so you, if you had one, you can use it and build off of what you already had um, to talk about where you know where your future was, plan you were planning for your future to go. You can talk about if you met that and talk about how things are changing and what you anticipate again. No. No, they might ask you more questions. Um, I don't think anyone's going to be like, no, that's not really the the, uh, the university's role in it. They just want to make sure that you've actually thought through certain areas. They're going to say you need to strengthen up. Like, they might kind of come back and be like, you only have one potential user here. Why do you think this is a viable core? And but they're not going to stop you, really. That's not what their their goal is. It's really to make sure, like, yeah, yeah, your, right. Your, your department might. Yeah. Negative deficit. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. That's true. Um, so mm-hmm. Yep. So really, it's not when you're requesting the earnings operation. It's possibly when you're sharing the business plan with potential stakeholders that then they might say, oh, we're not going to give you this money. Or um, the CCC might say if someone came to us with a core idea that 
we don't really want this to be a core or we can roll this into another core, something like that.